John Dio, House Majority Leader, Jay Kanzler, filmmaker and attorney who's uh, filming a new movie. We'll get to that in a second. And uh, Jane Duker, attorney and former chief of staff to Governor Holden. Uh, Jane Duker, uh, Lyft and Uber and the Tax Commission, still a major story this summer. Oh, yeah. I mean, and I don't I don't think it's going away anytime soon. I think, um, you know, it's an issue that they have to uh, take on. I think it represents the fact that there needs to be modernization of, you know, some of the way we do business in this town. And I, and I think growing pains are tough sometimes, but I'm hoping that this will get to the right answer. And But the, the goofiest part about the whole thing for me, which I want to mention, is, you know, I think the lieutenant governor needs more duties. I think we need to maybe um, outline some more things for him to do because the fact that he comes to St. Louis to sit through the lift hearings and testify, which he has really absolutely no— Again, this is him spending too much time in St. Louis. I, I'm okay with him being pro-St. Louis, but this is ridiculous. I mean, this has absolutely nothing to do with his job, and I just think that it shows that maybe maybe we either don't need the job or we need to reformulate the job. Well, now comes word that the— um, taxi cab drivers who are under the thumb of the taxi cab commission are now filing a lawsuit. They're upset with the way it's being run as well. Who I never once voted for a taxi cab commission commissioner. Why do this? Why does this taxi cab commission have so much power? Well, it's created by state law, and so state law allows them to create it. Because oh, so it's my fault. No, 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 no. We did that. Actually, we 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 oh, created. Okay. This is the good news for Everything's you. It is my fault. Yeah. Right. No, it, it is generally, but I'll, I'll, this one I will. Uh, actually, it was something that, as we indicated, sort of the last time we talked about this, maybe the cab situation in St. Louis was horrific. I mean, it it was really bad, and not that it's perfect now, but I mean, it was disastrous. And the idea now it's when just you got bad off versus really bad. It, seriously. Um, but so what they thought was, look, when you got off, you know, the plane in St. Louis's airport, you're a stranger. You have no idea whether these cabs are any good. That they were separately regulated by the 93 municipalities in St. Louis County. I mean, it was it was, you know, a disaster. So the theory was you set up a regional taxi cab commission to sort of you know consolidate and sort of you know regulate them all at once, so that at least the consumer knows if they've got the badge of honor that they've at least been regulated by a commission and, and all the regulations are the same. Now with a board staffed by their owners. Well, and that that is the difficulty is um, I think, you know, a lot of people now you want people who understand the industry to participate. I mean, there's a fine line between, you know, there are doctors on, you know, the Board of Healing Arts. They regulate themselves. I mean, and there's some reason for that because But the insurance companies don't regulate the right. board of or right. healing arts. Right. And that's a little bit of the difference. The people with a an a vested right, a vested financial interest. I agree. And so now um, that's not mandated in the bill, by the way. The state law doesn't require that those people be appointed. But but there was a reason for that. So now they were given, you know, a lot of rulemaking authority. There are certain things that they were given state duties, broad powers and authority, and and their and one of those them. duties was to keep out all competition. Well, no, I mean you don't. That's never a good <laughs> idea uh, because you know you got the FTC and you actually have the state antitrust laws. That's never something that's allowable. Um, and just because you're regulated doesn't mean it's not meant to be a monopoly. It's not meant to it's create more a kept monopoly. Out different, keep out different business models. Right. Well, it's no. It's meant to <laughs> no. It's meant to prevent you know bad things from happening. Sure. Background checks, the things we talked about, the right. basic level of regulation to make sure that when somebody gets Has off the cab the plane, situation in St. Louis gotten better. It's gotten better, but I don't think anyone would agree that it's where it needs to be. Right. I mean, and 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 so th you don't have these things happen. If everything were going well in St. Louis. Lyft and Uber wouldn't think they have a market here. There's a reason why there's a market here, and that's why the Taxi Cab Commission so why needs does the I, so why to does modernize. The, why does the judge say you can't do this? Why does the judge side— Because under current law, that is accurate, and that's the problem. And so, so if you want to change, then that's why I believe that, that Lyft and Uber need to come into the hearing and do what they're doing. Put your evidence and show that what— the Tax Cab Commission is doing is baloney and that it's anti-competitive versus good regulation to make sure we have safety and public welfare. But if you don't put something on the record, the judge has no choice to say, look, there are regulations that say you got to come in and get a license. You haven't done that. You haven't done anything. The judge's hands, I believe, are completely tied. So now Lyft and Uber are going in front of the commission. They're making a record. They need to put their case forward <laughs> and say these regulations don't have to do with safety. They have to do with, with competition limiting 
and, and and that's not fair. And then I think the judge, you know, looks at it and says, okay, I get to look at all the evidence and say really what's being regulated here and really what's fair and what's within the scope. So ultimately, the judge is going to have to rule in favor of these two companies. You know what I would in. prefer? I would prefer to not have judges running taxi cabs. I would prefer that the taxi cab commission really take a hard look at what they're doing and try to do the right thing from a policy standpoint rather, rather than litigate this. Courts running these things is never a good idea. Okay. Step you, up and get, and get good policy and do that. I hope they do. That's not going to happen when well, you have and the that taxi cab and that owners be. running the business. That and I think be. there's a, a fundamental difference of opinion as to whether or not these entities are even governed by the Taxi Cab Commission. I know we talked about this a little Not under ago. the current rules, but that doesn't mean that the rules well, I think, shouldn't be changed or can't know, be the, changed. Whether or not they're a taxi or a ride-sharing program um, I think is goes to another issue, and whether or not they should be even even be litigated is is an, another question. Right. Well, I mean, but I, I I think you need more of a record, I, and I think I, I know, yield the floor to John for a comment. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think it's ride share. I think it's more what we talk. I think it's a blend between you know the high tech hitchhiking that we right. talked about right. a few weeks ago and a cab service. Ride sharing, I think, implies that two people are going to work together, and we're. Right. I may pay you ten High bucks for gas. Right. right. I'm paying you ten bucks right. for gas. This, this is a company me. who's making money. Right. Taking money the, off the top. The, the 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 only factors I think which should be considered here are safety, background checks, yeah. insurance. Right. The st- stuff that, that that's legitimate to regulate public safety and, and those types of issues. You know, you can't you can't stop technology. Technology's here. Right. The way people do it. And the reality is that there are huge holes of service. I would like to see. What percentage of the taxi cab business in this city originates from just the airport or like the the uh, bus station right. downtown? How much other cab is actually used? My guess would be not much when you <clears throat> when you take out the airport and this and they're just there are huge holes, particularly in neighborhoods where you just can't get a cab. If you have to, or you have to wait forty five minutes. Yeah. For so, so 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 if I have to right. book a cab three hours in advance to go to a restaurant out right. in West County. Right. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to book a cab. Right. And so so either those service holes have to be addressed and maybe that's where something like this gets layered into it or layered into well, it but, in areas right. where it but the cab doesn't companies make sense. don't want to be forced to go to North St. Louis and help people take, you know, and, and fill needs that, you know, Lyft and Uber don't want to do. Lyft and Uber want to, you know, stay downtown and, and shuttle kids, you know, back well, and forth to the bars. Well, that's not necessarily true. They, they're I a, disagree with that. No, no, but they're no, not they're, mandated. Oh, no. If, unless they're regulated by the Taxi Cab Commission, they're not mandated. Why can't I hang out in the house everybody. in Manchester and say, if someone out here needs a cab, boom, boom, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Yeah. Right. Well, no. I mean, well, but then then you can't force the existing cab companies to go to areas they don't want to go to either. That's no, no, the no, thing. I, it needs no, to no, be fair no, across I, the board. I'm saying maybe that's how you, you fill the hole. You know, that maybe that's where they find their balance. I'm not saying you force one or the other but they right. recognize that there are i just want i just think everybody needs to live a, by the same rules that also, you're gonna regulate but there's a bigger fair. issue here going forward what about airbnb right so airbnb comes in and, and so i can rent a room for a hundred dollars from somebody there's no um you know uh there's no fees and uh, hotel motel uh, hotel tax. motel tax right. and all that other stuff and yet so this they're acting as a hotel motel without being a hotel motel do the hotels come in and then try and act ax them out well, I mean, that's that's the kind of thing. When when you set up regulation, people are always going to try to find ways to get outside it, which forces the governmental body to look at it and say, really, is this realistic? And we've got to we've got to figure out how to deal with new business models. And, you know, so, yeah, that that's this kind of stuff happens. all Well, the time. but but, you know, you talk about how keeping the re- regulations on the existing taxi cab. Look at radio. You know, radio is heavily regulated. Absolutely. Whereas satellite radio isn't. Internet radio isn't. Right. Cable isn't. But. You know, Channel 5 is. So you can say words on MSNBC you're not allowed to say on NBC. Correct. Which I doesn't mean, make any sense. Right. Well, and that's the thing. And and, I, and in, in the cab driver's defense, I mean, they're being told that they will lose their license if they don't, if they, you know, refuse to pick up people in areas that they don't want to do or, or do rides. And they say, well, Lyft and Uber don't have to do that. And so, you know, that's that's not fair to them. That's, well, go ahead. Go ahead, Jay. No, then go ahead. That's Jay Kanzler, that's uh, Jane Duker, and that's John Deal. Back in a moment, the board meeting in session on the Big 550 KTRA.